How's it going everyone? And we've got to that time of year again. Yes, it's the final day of 2018 and let's take a look at how my backpack has changed over the last 12 months. I do start this video with a bit of a warning. I have sold a lot of stuff this year, so there's going to be slightly less unusuals than maybe you're expecting. However, I have actually gained a lot of unusual taunts as they're just there's just so many of them around at the moment. But let's start off with page number one. And of course, this is where I keep the majority of my unusuals, my hats and my weapons. As you can see, there's some spaces now. And this used to go on to a second page. There used to be a lot more unusuals. And I've just sold them because, you know, I, uh, I, I, I quit my job this year. And I've been streaming full time doing YouTube. And I just kind of, you know... The money was slightly more important, but I have kept the ones, the god tears. I've kept the ones that are very uh, close to my heart. We'll just go, we'll just take a quick look through them. So I've got my vintage Tyrolean, which is sunbeams. I've got my scorching flames beak. Of course, this one is professional killstreak using those glitched professional killstreak kits that happened a long time ago in MVM. You can make anything professional killstreak. Well, I've made a bunch of my unusual hats professional killstreak, and this is one of them. This is the other one, well, another one of them, I should say, which is my Tyrant's Helm, which is Scorching Flames, which is pretty much my favorite hat in the game. Scorching Flames, Tyrant's Helm, level 88. 88 was the year I was born. You know, fire horns is my favourite kill streak. It's just, it's just that is that is the embodiment of my happiness in TF2. Uh, then we've got the tossel camp, which is also scorching flames. Not scorching flames. Sunbeams on the bonk boy. And this one's as professional kill streak. It's also a strange one because you can have a stranger fire for the bonk boy. So I've got a stranger fire on it as well. Then we've got my wraith wrap. This is pretty much my most expensive hat um, in my backpack. One of the most expensive items I own. This was when I got it years and years ago. This was one of one, the Scorching Flames. It was the only uh, Scorching Flames Wraith Wrap in existence. I do believe there is at least one more in existence and also a Burning Flames one as well. So, you know, the price has fluctuated, but it's still pretty much my most expensive hat. And then we've got the Dragonborn Helmet. This one's Burning Flames. These two have got Halloween uh, spells on them, which seem to be kind of few and far between these days. Don't seem to be able to get um, you know new spells to add, so items with spells on them are becoming slightly more you know rare and expensive. Um, and again, this is one's professional kill streak. I also have a large luchador for the heavy. Something burning this way comes. That's the bat that circles your head. That's on fire. For the spy hats, limited. We've got a limited hat here. This is a fancy fedora with a burning flames, and then a scorching flames La Party Phantom. I used to have a Sunbeams one as well. Back when you were able to glitch items, you were able to glitch your loadout so you could wear multiple of the same item. So you could essentially wear two party phantoms. And I used to wear a Sunbeams one as well. Uh, but then they fixed that glitch, and I didn't really feel the need to have two of the same item. I can only wear one at a time. And then we've got the professional kill streak regulator. This is what a lot of people know me for, right? You know, the demo man loaded, the golden demo man. Um, there will be a loadout video coming soon, guys, so keep your eyes peeled. Um, but yes, the uh, the regulator sunbeams, and I've added singularity deadly daffodil just because you know it's a bit themed. You know, you know, just because it's gold. We love gold. Then we're on to sniper, some sniper items. We've got green energy, yellow belt, and purple energy, villain's veil, which is also uh, strange. It's up to uh, the top, the top level of strange there with uh, what, sixteen thousand points. Um, those two together make white energy. Then we've got big country with scorching flames. Killer exclusive with Disco Beatdown. I love Disco Beatdown. It was such a high rated effect when it first came out in the Gen 2 wave of new unusual effects. Everyone thought it was going to be the next kind of burning flames sort of tier of unusual effect. And then there was just an absolute plummet of uh, the price. A lot of people just said, oh, actually, you know, it's not that good. We didn't like it. And I thought, what? You guys are crazy. So that's when I picked this one up. Um, but this is a long time ago now. Then I've got my antlers here, green confetti, all class, unusual, that has no equip region. The antlers, you know, they may not look the nicest thing, you know, unless you're into looking like a deer. <laughs> but the fact that it has no equip region and it is all class means you can pretty much just add any unusual effects you want to your loadouts. Of course, if you've got the money for it, these are very expensive, the antlers. And I've got my antifreeze festive tree. I really like the effect antifreeze. It's something I'd like to have on more hats, but this is the only antifreeze hat I have. Then my gibbous, nuts and bolt gibbous. Hey, it's themed, right? Shit effect, shit hat. 
excuse my language, but there we go. Uh, then we've got my big country, level 69, purple energy, and then I can combine that with my green energy, Brainiac hairpiece. Um, and that gives me the white energy look on my engineer as well. Then I've got a couple of nappers. Um, this one is Amaranthine um, with a couple of spells on it. This was donated to me by someone called Soviet Kitty. Very, very kind of them. Then this one here, this one is Haunted Ghosts. You're probably wondering, why, why don't you just sell one of the one of the nappers you've got? I mean, you know, I wear this one with a, a different loadout, which you'll see in a later video. Um, and it was, a, it was a gift, it was a donation from someone who was really, really kind to me. And this hat used to be owned by my good friend Steve, who was probably the greatest pirate to ever play the game in, in you know, in competitive. He was pirate of the season many, many, many times. And um, this was the hat he used to have, and uh, I traded for him because he said he no longer wanted it. And it's kind of, you know, a memento, a reminder. But onto this hat here, we got the Dapper's Topper, sorry, Dapper Topper, Doctor's Dapper Topper, which is Roboactive. It's uh, kind of like Antifreeze, but pink. Then we've got the Tower of TF2. This was gifted to me by my man Sean. Um, circling TF logo. Then we've got, uh, this was given to me by a bunch of stream viewers um, years ago. As you can see, like four years ago or something. Uh, Purple Confetti uh, Stovepipe, I think that one's called. And then we've got the Plugin Prospector. And creating was the answer. This one was one of the ones I hand created a long time ago. Um, this one's for the engineer. And again, Disco Beatdown. I quite like it. I quite like it. Then we've got some of these ones which are kind of the... Uh, the ones that have a grade. So this was the best unusual I've ever uncreated grade wise. So it's an assassin grade hat, but it's only mass flies. So it's just kind of that paradox, right? You know, great, great grade. You know, it's a pink, pink level hat, but it's only mass flies. So, you know, there we go. <laughs> then we've got the woolen warmer with vivid plasma. Uh, we've got my universal translator which has got Nebula. So Nebula is such an amazing effect. I love the Nebula effect. It's just unfortunate it's not really available on very many hats. And the nicest hats, things like the Corona Australis, are really expensive because they're elite grade, which makes them extremely rare. Um, and also the Nebula effect. Now, the Universal Translator, I got this when it was a Demoman only hat because I just wanted a Nebula hat. And then it obviously became all class. Um, so now I can wear this on any any class I want and I've been trying to make some loadouts with it because I would like to have Nebula involved in some of my loadouts. Then I've got my prehistoric pullover with uh, I think it's called Nether Trail, is that how you say it? Nether Trail. Um, this again is an, like an all-class hat and it's a really nice like really nice one actually when you consider it's it's all class and it's it's a nice looking hat and it's only mercenary grade so it's it's fairly you know it's a fairly common kind of hat. Um, and then again this one it's got a strange unusual helmet and that's is that Ether Trail? Um, which, you know, again, I really like this hat and it's only mercenary grade, so it's not actually that expensive and I think it looks quite cool. This is one of the, uh, the shark hats that I uncreated. This is the Tesla coil one. Again, uh, mercenary grade and another one, the Eldritch Frame Smoky Sombrero. I also uncreated that one. Onto some weapons now and we've got the Pink Elephant Sticky Bomb Launcher Factory New and it's got, uh, Killstreak, right? Professional Killstreak. Um, I used to use these two for MVM quite a lot. This one's got the Sweet Dreams grenade launcher, minimal wear. So, I mean, they're not strange, so that's why I used to use them for MVM. And um, they both have the kind of hot effect. So, they're, you know, they're burning, they're pinking, pink looking. Goes with a nice pink loader. And they're assassin grade, so they're kind of rare. Then we've got the Black Dahlia pistol. This is minimal wear with energy orb, again, not strange. But a very nice looking pistol indeed. Um, I actually used to loan this to the Lash for lands and stuff. So if you ever watch sort of I series or um, Copenhagen Games or Rewind, you know those big lands, big TF2 events. You ever see Thalash running this pistol? This is the pistol. This is the exact pistol. I used to learn it to him for lands. Uh, moving on to some strange ones though. We've got my backwards boomstick. This was my first ever um, unusual weapon. Field tested. It's strange. And look at that damage, got over a million damage on it already. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really, really like this. I uh, really, really like this. It's, it's just goes with, good with a green loadout. Then I've got another one here, another isotope one. This is the Flower Power Revolver. Minimal wear, strange. Um, I really like that for the Spire. I'll be honest with you, I really wanted uh, one of the higher ones, but it was an Assassin grade and I could never find a strange one with the right effect. Um, so that's something I'm looking for, maybe to kind of upgrade this. Um, but it's I'm only really wanting a strange one. Then I've got my flamethrower here. This is one of my nicest looking weapons, I think. I think energy orb just goes really, really well with this. It's forest fire. It's a strange one, minimal wear. And just energy orb looks so cool, especially with the pyros. You'll see that on the loadout videos later on. 
Then we've got this, which these two items have the unusual kind of little little badge on them, but they're not necessarily uh, you know unusual weapons. They have the community sparkle effect. So this is the professional kill streak Lugamorph with community sparkle, and then I have the self-made key community sparkle, which I traded for. These were given to people who created items in the game, and they became tradable when the keys, things like festive keys or Halloween keys, became regular keys after the event ended, and, and they were able to be sold. So these are quite expensive and quite rare. Um, but that's the unusuals I have. Moving on to the next page, we've got the kind of rarer items. We've got the Max's Seven Head, the Huwa, and the Earbuds, level 99. Um, and then we've got a bunch of vintage. We've got all the vintage hats in the game. Except for glitched ones, there are some glitched ones like glitched uh, vintage earbuds and vintage maxes, etc. The only glitch one I have is the Bills hat. I have a vintage Bills hat which uh, isn't normally available, but uh, Valve added some into the game by mistake. Um, but for all the regular vintage hats, I have those. And then we got genuines. Um, there's a lot of genuines that I've got. I haven't got all of them in the game, but I've got you know a large proportion. A lot of these came from things like, you know, this came from Football Manager 2012, very old. Um, this came from Deus Ex, Human Revolution. The Spy Crab Level 69, this one was available when you got the actual real-life Spy Crab plushie. Um, that was available and you got this thing in game. So there's a lot of things, you know, Dragonborn came from playing uh, Skyrim. And this came from, I think it was Fallout New Vegas. So a lot of these hats go way, way back. Um, and I've got quite a lot of them. A lot of them I've traded for. I don't have all of the games for, you know, these things. Moving on to the strangers now. I've got some strange cosmetics. I've used a lot of stranger fires on things just to make them strange. Uh, but there's not actually that many I use. Most of the ones I use are my Allfather. Which you can see I've got, what, 197,000 points. I've got my Professor Specs, which has got, what, 108,000 points. Um, apparently I helped eight new users. Eight new users. So there you go. You're welcome for getting uh, into TF2 because of me. <laughs> and then we've got the uh, the summer shades as well, which I haven't used that much lately. But then we've got a lot of other strangers, um, things like uh, other bruises bandana, which is something I should use more, honestly. And um, then we've got some slightly more sort of slightly rarer hats, like uh, the Lumbricus lid. This is a limited one. This came from having worms. Um, well, not having worms, having the game worms, that is. Then we've got things like the Team Captain, the Service Medal. There was only, what, uh, 10,000 of these released into the game when it first came out. Um, and we've got things like you know the BMOC, etc., and the Tux, which came from um, installing uh, Linux on your computer and, you know, getting that done. And then we've basically just got hordes and hordes of unique hats. Some of them I wear, like my Dangerous 2. Some of them I, I don't really wear. It's just kind of part of the collection, really. A lot of them have uh, some, some special memories to them. We've got some rarer things, like here we go, the Towering Pillar of Summer Shades. This came from the 2014 Summer Event on Steam, and it was one of the possible rewards. So again, a slightly rare, uh, unique item. It doesn't look rare, but it is slightly rare, and it's uh, got a slightly invaded price. And then we come on to the Halloween items. So I have all of the Halloween items in the game. Starts off with the 2009, this is a special Halloween 2009 item. This is the Gibbous, the original Gibbous. You can change the style of it. Um, I've made mine strange using a stranger fire. As you can see, I've got a lot of points on this one as well, 132,000 points. Um, I use it on my medic quite a lot, hence the large number of assists. But also, um, I made it professional kill streak because again, I was like, oh, I've got one of these things, let's slap it on there for. You know, just for the fun of it. Then we got 2010, you've got Strange Voodoo Juju and the Spine Chilling Skull. And then 2011, you've got the uh, this Spine Chilling Skull. Then we've got the Monoculus, the Headless Horseman's Head, uh, the Strange Mask <laughs> thing, uh, the Seal Mask, and the Saxon Hell Mask. Obviously, that's came from combining all of these masks. So I've got one mask for everything. And all of these are the 2011 Halloween items, the sets, uh, the first kind of major Halloween update. And that included, um, you know, the haunted uh, variant of items. So I have all of the haunted versions, and these are all the sets. They each class had three items which you could complete as a set. Moving on to the next year, this was the 2012 stuff when they added the Voodoo Cursed Soul. So again, all of these souls, all of the items in haunted. We didn't quite have sets this time around. We had like, you know, the princess one for the heavy. Um, but other than that, all of these kind of things were were separate. And of course, the um, the, what's his name? Marasmus. The Marasmus hat. I've killed Marasmus at level 7. There you go. How many, what's your highest level of killing Marasmus? Because uh, I'm not sure how high it can physically go. But yes, um, so I've got all of these in Haunted. Moving on to the next years, and then they basically started being like, hey, let's not do, you know, 
kind of let's not go small let's go big and they just release a whole bunch of items so these are all the haunted items these are every single haunted item if it's possible to have them in strange as well like these ones i've got the strange haunted versions um these basically only count things that happen during halloween like carnival kills and things like that um, but i've got all of them in the game and then we move on to when valve started changing things and they were like hey let's do these grading things kind of like csgo and this is when the gargoyle collection came out so i've got all of the items from the gargoyle collection you can take a look when i look there it shows you which ones I have. There's ticks next to all of the names. And if there's a star, that means I own an unusual version of it as well. So again, if anyone got one of these collections with all of the stars, like an unusual version of every single item, that would be pretty sick. That's maybe something I could try if I had like 50 years to work on it. Um, and then we've got this one, which is the Creepy Crawly collection, which came out the next year. And this also added some of the items uh, that you could wear during Halloween. These were Halloween specific, whereas these ones you can wear all the time, which I think was quite a good idea because the older Halloween items were restricted to Halloween. And there's some really nice items that you can't wear on a day to day basis, whereas in these collections you now can. Uh, moving on to the next collection, we've got Tough Break Cosmetic Collection which I've got all of uh, all of the items in that. I've got all of them from the Mayflower Cosmetics collection as well. These are all in order, just because, you know, I'm very, very, um, you know, organized when it comes to some things in my life, such as my TFT backpack. So everything is in order. Then we have the Winter 2016 Cosmetics collection. Again, all of them there, all in order. And then we have Rainy Day Cosmetics collection, um, which... Yeah, there's some interesting, remember I have an unusual version of that, which is pretty cool. And then we come on to the Jungle Inferno update. So we've got all of the regular items that you get from playing through the contracts, the Saxton hat, the monstrous memento, and then the, uh, basically the Yeti kind of thing for the, uh, for the heavy, the, uh, the get up there. And then we have the two different, um, collections. So we have the abominable cosmetic collection. So I've got all of them in there. And then I've got all of the Unleash the Beast cosmetic collections, which fits very nicely in on the page. I think, you know, it's nice to have, you know, what, 20 items per collection. It fits nice on my page. On to the next page. And then we've got Winter 2017. So last Christmas's uh, collection. Again, this one had 20 items, which is pretty cool. And then we have the Blue Moon cosmetics collection. Um, there we go. I've got my Robin Walkers, my uh, Elite Grade Strange Slippers. I've um, got a lot of points. I wear those quite a lot these days. We've got all of the items from that collection as well. Then we've got the Violet Vermin collection. So that's the Halloween from this year. Um, we've got all of the items from that. That's my strange lucky cat hat that I uncreated this year. Very, very lucky indeed. You also had these items, the Dell in the Shell, Shell of a Man, Crocodile Mundi, and the Scope of Scales. And these were items for the Engineer and the Sniper respectively. And they came in this collection, but they weren't actually part of the collection. They just came in at the same time. Then we have Winter 2018. This is obviously the, the current case that is still, I guess, it's still ongoing. I've got all of the items from those. Now, I actually uncrated a lot of them myself. I mean, from here up until here, I, I uncrated all of them. Uh, but I had to trade for these ones um, because I didn't actually have them. Uh, I didn't actually uncrate those myself. Then we get some unusual taunts. As you can see, there's probably more unusual taunts here than there was last year. Um, so less unusual hats, more taunts, just because taunts are becoming a lot more prevalent these days. So I've got my conga here, which was my fountain of delight. Um, I put a professional kill streak on that again. Don't ask me why. I don't know. Um, but this was uh, the, one of my original taunts that I got, and it was really, really nice. Um, Screaming Tiger, Fresh Brew Victory, another Fresh Brew Victory with Showstopper, uh, my Obliterator with Holy Grail, Party Trick, Fountain of Delight for Pyro, Biolife with uh, Showstopper, Rancho Relaxer with Skill Gone Gains, Meet the Medic with Showstopper, um, Torn ICU Unusual Effect 72. This was my first ever unusual unbox years ago. If you can dig out through my uh, videos, you can find the original video from when I uncreated this. Um, and that was my first ever unusual unbox, yeah. And there's been many since, but that was the first. Um, we got Deep Fried Desire, Midnight Whirlwind. This was another one I uncrated. We got the Kozowski Kick, Spectral Swirl. I uncrated the Unusual Fire for this during Halloween, and then I used it. Uh, same with this one, Bucking Bronco, Infernal Smoke. We got Soldier's Requiem, Hellish Inferno. Um, another one, this was a gift from Epic Stormer. And this is another chicken taunt with Infernal Smoke. Then we got the Bad Pipes with Spectral Swell. Another chicken taunt. I got, what, three versions of the uh, chicken taunt? 
And this was another donation. Uh, tastes 47% better when gifted. Um, this is Silver Cyclone, this one. We've got Screaming Tiger, Skullcracker, Disco Fever, Showstopper. This is another donated one from Iskatnik, um, and it looks really cool. We've got another Soldier's Requiem with Midnight uh, Whirlwind. Batting a thousand Mega Strike. I've given a few away. I swear there's so many Mega Strikes of this. I think I've given away like two of these on streams in the past, um, and I still have one, <laughs> one myself. Um, we've got another Rancho Lecture, this one's a Showstopper. This is my Roaring Rockets uh, pool party, which I did myself recently. And Zoom and Broom with the Spooky Night, again, did that recently, as I did this one. Ominous Night, results are in. And then I traded for this one, Acidic Bubbles of Envy. This one um, is the one that I kind of wanted when I used the initial fire um, on my pool party. And this one's a nice bubbling one. And then I've got this one, which is a strange, unusual taunt. Is there any strange, unusual taunt you can actually have in the game? It's the Burst, burst Chest. It has Haunted Phantasm, which means little ghosts come out of the ground. And, um, yeah, it counts how many times you've used the taunt. Then I have the Genuine Shred Alert, and then I have a bunch of just the regular taunts. Um, which, you know, I think over time, all of those are just going to be sold. I'm just going to keep my unusual ones. Um, try and get maybe one unusual for every taunt. Then I've got my medals. So on the first page here, this is my sixes page. These are all medals I've got from playing 6v6. Uh, the most recent one, Division 1, silver medal. Wow, wow. Losing at the final hurdle. <laughs> I guess, um, I don't know, I've got third place in high as well. Um, high playoff medals. So yeah, maybe maybe next time around we can get a, a premiership participation medal for sixes. Um, but the best thing here, I've got platinum first place for playing UGC sixes. So I was a Platinum Champion as well. Oh, and a third place in one of the Essentials Cups recently. Uh, we lost to seven, so I, I think uh, I think that's all right, losing to, you know, arguably one of the greatest teams of all time. Um, this page is a lot more interesting. This is my Highlander page. And then we've got my Premiership Medals. So I've got five of these Winners Medals. I've got Season 9, Season 10, Season 11, Season 14, and Season 16 um, are all Premiership Medals gold medals, the winner's medals. I also have a bunch for um, UGC. Uh, they've got this one, which is platinum first place, and this one, which is uh, platinum first place. They keep changing the... Uh, so I've got a second and a third. So I've got first, second, and third for platinum, um, but they're all different kind of types of medals. They change their medals a lot more frequently than etf 2 l do. And then down here, I've got my land winner's medals. So I've got Deutschland from 2015, 101, and Copenhagen Games from 2018 as well. There was, a, I did win Deutschland 2016, but there wasn't an in-game medal for that, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, that's my Highland page. And this was kind of charity page. These are various charity medals that you get from donating to charity events and, and supporting them. So I've got my uh, Tip of the Hats medals from 2015, 16, 17, and 18. Then we've got Hugs TF 2017 and 2018. Actually, I was at the 2018 event myself. Um, I was doing things like MVM and uh, being on the couch. If anyone watched it, you might have seen me. We got the Blapperture one from last year and this year. Um, this one's from Rally Call. And then we got this one for uh, Yogg's Cast, the, the Jingle Jam from last year. This was supporting Deutschland, helping uh, for the fundraiser. We got Heels for Reels from last year. Uh, TIF2 Maps from this year. Uh, contributing this was when I was because I did casting for essentials I got a participation or well, contributor medal I should say and then it's just some random medals a 4v4 the one season I played UGC 4v4 and uh, ulti duo I, I think I was signed up for a, a tournament and uh, I was I helped out on a newbie Highlander Cup teaching a new players so I got a medal for that as well so those are all of the medals. Then we got this page, which is just kind of like, you know, like the contract things. So we got the first one, which is the uh, the the duck journal, and then we got the uh, the gun metal campaign coin, the invasion coin, the Marasmus uh, gargoyle, the tough break campaign stamp. Uh, we got the contractor now, which is for different for, for different kind of things. These used to have ticks next to their name. So you see where it says on the top right the gunmetal collections and it's got all of the different cosmetic collections and the gun and the skin collections. It used to be that there would be ticks next to those if you had a complete collection, which I do. So it was nice to look at this and see all of the collections complete. But for some reason in a, in an update a while ago they removed that so it no longer has ticks next to those things like it does with the with the guns. But yeah, these when you level them up you get them to like Australium and you know Marasmus's own soul gargoyle. Marasmus's own is the highest rank for the gargoyle as well. This was a competitive matchmaking pass that I got um, 
for you know doing the it was gifted to me by John and uh, you know the, the beta invite so yeah and then we got all of these things Soldier of Fortune I started playing in September 2008 that was when I first started playing TF2 so it's been well over 10 years now I uh, got my dueling badge um, which I don't use very often as you can see um, date received 2010 wins 47 so I don't I don't I don't duel very often Bombonomicom um, Saxon's own spirit of given I've given 598 gifts so there you go I'm sure there's people with higher than that uh, but 598 gifts is pretty cool then we got the sound the noisemakers these are the, just the spell book so the fireproof secret diary which was rumored to be extremely like important for some reason um, but you know, it never got really used for anything other than a special, you know, spell book. And then we got the fancy spell book, which you can put pages in. Um, and then we got the uh, the spell book magazine. And then again, the the, the capacitor, which kind of came with the diary as, as a slightly rare item, but doesn't really do anything. It's just essentially a cosmetic now. Um, then we got my MVM page. These are just my MVM medals. Uh, two cities, you can see I'm up to level 340. Um, and then we've got my campaign kind of badges from the titanium tank missions. And then the uh, the canteen crasher one, so I got all the way up to gold. Then I've got my canteens here. My strange canteens got it's up to rage inducing, so we're getting there. Maybe we can get to hell zone by this time next year. <laughs> um, and then we've got the crits or crits one, which kind of is strange, but it's it's a bit weird. You can only use it during Halloween. And then I've just got things that you know I'm selling or I'm making to kind of sell on it's my rewards from MVM. My next page is when the weapons start. So I have all of the weapons in the game that are legitimate I guess so I've got all the stranges all of the festives all of the strange festives except for ones using a festivizer I've not festivized everything possible um, I've got all of the vintage items and I've got all of the genuine items as well so for example some weapons have multiple versions so I've got the vintage fan of war the genuine fan of war and the strange fan of war which is called fan versus machine haha <laughs> um, yeah, so I've got everything. There are some things like the, for example, the vintage shortstop, which is a glitch that I remember at the start when we were talking about the vintage bills. That is a, vint uh, that is a vintage shortstop that is glitched. There's only a few. They're very rare, uh, but I don't consider them like legitimate ones to try and obtain because, you know, they're, they're glitched ones. So these are my scout items. I've got all the scout weapons. And then we've got soldier, uh, pyro, demo, heavy, which, you know, again, I have a lot of the slightly rare things like the genuine Robo Sandwich, things like that. I've also got all of the bread weapons. So, yeah, and all of the, the kind of achievement item weapons that come from, uh, from various games. Uh, the Engineer, you can see how few items the Engineer actually has relative to other classes. Uh, same with the Medic. Um, a lot of festive. I've made some of my items festive, like my Chris Krieg and my Quick Fix. Because, you know, I am a Medic main. Uh, we got Sniper, Spy, and then we're on to Bot Killers. So I've got all of the Bot Killers in the game. We start off with the Rust, then we go down to the Blood one. So these ones came from Intermediate Missions. Then we've got Silver 1 and Gold 1, and then we've got Silver 2 and Gold 2. These came from some of the Advanced Original Missions. Um, then we've got Carbonado and Diamond, and these ones came from um, the Expert Missions. Um, then I've got a bunch of <laughs> I've got a bunch of conscientious objectors that people have given me, or you know, stuff like that, <laughs> which have been quite nice. Nice to have little different signs. Then I've got my collector's collection. So I've got five collector's items for each class. Um, some of them, like this one's professional kill streak rocket jumper, doesn't do any damage, so you can't get a kill streak with it. But if you get a kill streak with another item and you switch to this weapon, then the kill streak will show from your eyes, and the kill streak sheen does show on your weapon all the time. So it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I've got five uh, five items um, for each class, and then I've got a couple of cosmetics. I've got the Belgian detective and the uh, the rogues curl rule. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. With a couple of uh, got Halloween spells on that. As you can see, I'm trying to build a collector's spy loadout. Um, onto the next page, and then we've got all of the skins. So this is the concealed killer collection, the powerhouse collection. Uh, the gunmetal cosmetics collection again I've got all of the items in all of these things and all of these skins are factory new um, then we've got the craftsman collection two fork, two fork collection uh, confidential collection and the quarantined collection um, so these ones again were all factory new these ones are from 
um, the invasion update. So when there's items that can be strange, I've, I've got them as strange, so like the, the bat saber, the kappa, and the uh, shooting star. Oh, and the, uh, the wrangler, the geiger counter. So that's from the invasion update. Then we got some more. We got the gentleman's collection. A lot of things in there. Got all of them from there. Again, all of these are factory new. Pyroland collection, uh, which, you know, I've got unusual versions of some of these items. Then we've got the Boneyard, sorry, not Boneyard, the Harvest Collection. So Boneyard Revolver is in the Harvest Collection. Um, all of these are factory new. Uh, that's oh, that's an entire collection. Then we've got the Warbird Collection, which uh, was one of the ones that you had to uncase. And then we got some skins. Now obviously they changed from, uh, sorry, not we got some war paints. We went from having skins to having war paints. Um, so we start off with the Infernal Reward Collection. Um, this one was from Jungle Inferno, I believe. Um, then we've got the Jungle Jackpot collection. Um, so I've got one of every skin, as you can see by all the ticks next to the names. Um, I've just not used them onto any weapons. Then we've got the Decorated War Hero collection and the Contract Campaigner collection. Now these collections were from... Uh, I think this was from something else, but I can't really remember. Jungle Inferno, and you had to use the uh, the special cases to get them, I think. Then we've got some more. We've got the Winter 2017 collection here. So we've got all of the uh, wall paints from that. And then we've got the Scream Fortress X or Scream Fortress 10 collection, which is the most recent one, um, which I've got all of the ones from that as well. Um, then we've got a Dragon Slayer wall paint here. Um, you can get things that, that, you know, most of them are factory new, but there are some out there that are non-factory new. So maybe that's something I can try and go for, get a, you know, a special one, because there was a small window where they weren't always factory new. And then I've got the Smith's Sweater War Paint. I've kept on to hold on one of those without using it. Um, and then we come on to kind of special items. So I've got all of the Australiums. Um, all of them are... Um, if they can be festive, I've made them festive, and they're all professional kill streak. So I've got Hail Zone on my scatter gun, on my rocket launcher, on my black box, sticky launcher, grenade launcher, minigun, and what else? Sniper rifle. That's exactly Hail Zone. Exactly Hail Zone. And my knife. So I'm trying to work my way up to Hell Zone on everything else. Then we've got all of the Dragon Slayer weapons. Really, really wish these could be strange because I reckon I'd use a lot of these. Um, but yeah, I've got one of each. And these ones are all factory new. I don't have any of the uh, the special non-factory new versions. On to the next page. And these are just kind of gifted items that have been gifted to me by kind of various players. So um, for those of you who watched TF2 way back, um, the I-49 champions. This is Numlocked. This is Mike um, Gear. Stefan, aka Shocky, uh, Bash, and Nox. Players like Nox and Mike and uh, Numlock now play in Overwatch. Numlock plays in the Overwatch League. You might have seen Mike playing for uh, the UK in the Overwatch World Cup uh, in the summer. And then there's just various things from other people like Blaze and you know people that you know I wanted to to have gifted items from. Then we've got my crate collection, my crate collection. So we start off with number one all the way down to 50. <laughs> um, then we go 51 and then we get to 69 and then Valve stopped numbering. They didn't do 70 or 80. So these, these, these two holes in my collection that will probably never ever be filled unless they retroactively make something into, you know, an eight, a 70 and an 80. But they used to have, you know, the, the salvaged ones. 30, 40, and 50 were exceedingly rare. 30 is actually the most expensive crate in the game. And if you uncrate it, you basically lose money because the crate is worth more than the contents <laughs> for the most part. So, yeah. Um, so then they did the reserve crate, and I guess they were trying to do something big for 1780, and then they just they just couldn't think of anything and never bothered. Um, so you go up to the 92, and then they kind of stopped naming them. But if you go to things like backpack.tf, they are kind of slightly named. So we've got one of every crate after that. This is when these collections started appearing. Then it got up to here, and then we had 103. So we know that they were kind of privately naming those things. But after that, it goes on to uh, these cases again. This one was an unlocked from Christmas two years ago, um, where you didn't even have to buy a key. You just bought the case, and then you unlocked it. Um, then we've got all the collections. Then we've got these ones here, which were still c technically part of the uh, the series. Um, and these came from Jungle Inferno. 
these are where some of the other things came from and then we've got winter 2017 duh, 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 and then we come all the way up to the present day which is winter 2018 and that is uh, the most recent case then we've got some individual cases these are unnumbered cases i guess so we've got the unlocked creepy crates from a while ago from halloween where again you didn't buy a key you just bought them you can actually only open them during halloween so you can't open them the rest of the year you have to open them during halloween we've got one each of the unlocked cosmetic crates there's one for each class and then there's all class one or multi-class i should say then we've got the stockpile crate um we've got the audition reel the director's reel so this was when um taunts used to be uncreatable in order to get an unusual version um, and then they released this one, which is director's reel, which you could, you know, flip between like this one. You could flip between the kind of things by putting in different words and it would change the stuff that would come out, which is quite an interesting idea. We've got the Halloween package, bread box, uh, Manco package, gift cauldron, claim check from summer 2013. Um, Manco painting scent, anniversary package, summer starter kit from summer 2014. Gift stuff stocking. I don't know what year this was from because I've opened all the other ones. Uh, Smithsmith's 2015 gift. So that's from 2015. And a delivered gift of all package. This was given to me by someone called Talk Sick. In brackets, Max. Um, I can't remember what's inside it. You can see it if you go onto things like um, backpack.tf or your Steam inventory. Uh, but I thought oh, it would be nice to keep one of these. And then I've got just storage, basically. So I've got a couple of pages of refined. Page 50 and 51 are just full of refined. And then we just got some more refined, a few keys here. Um, these are just robot parts for MVM for filling things up. As you can see, I've got quite a lot of them. Then you just got things like festivizers and transfer tools, uh, dueling mini games, name tags. It's just stuff that I, you know, if I ever need to use them. Uh, we got some secret saxons, pilot gifts, things to give away. Gift wrap, decal tool, gift pulse. I've got a chemistry set here for the sandwich safe. Um, so maybe that's something I can build at some point. Um, these are just things that I'm kind of going to be using. So I've got my Smithsmith thing from uh, this year. So I'm not sure what item I want to use it on. I want to use it on something that I'm actually going to use. Um, seeing as I'm keeping one, but I can use this one. I've got some unusual fires here as well. I used a bunch during Halloween. And I'm going to save these ones for outside of Halloween. So look forward to that in the future um, and then this is just stuff that I'm gonna sell nothing very interesting whatsoever just stuff that I'm gonna get rid of and sell on marketplace so check out my shop if you ever want to buy some stuff but there we go that is the backpack guys that went on for ages I do apologize if any of you fell asleep and it's time for you to wake up and uh, you know watch a different video now but thanks for watching guys I hope you enjoyed and um, yeah if there's any questions comments anything you want to know about my backpack from this year just let me know and um, it'll be interesting to see in 12 months how much it's changed again it's the biggest change we've had I think this year compared to last year we've built up the collections we've lost some unusuals we've also gained a lot of unusual taunts as well uh, but thanks for watching guys take care have a great Great new year and I'll see you soon.